Inside this carrying case is the most anticipated 60% keyboard of the year. Inside this protective bag is the most anticipated 60% keyboard of the year. Behind this mosaic is the most anticipated- Hey bro, you gotta stop that. Just show the dang keyboard already. Hey, calm down, man. I'm just trying to build a little bit of suspense. Jeez. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Scott K. Today, I am excited to share with you this, the QK60. If you recall, the QK65 was probably one of the most well-received keyboards of the year. It combined great aesthetics, exceptional quality, comfortable typing experience, and an amazing sound into a sub $200 package. It was essentially a premium keyboard behind the entry keyboard label. It's a great keyboard that you still cannot get. And guess what? QWERTY Keys is back with another bombshell. QK65 has a new younger sister and her name is QK60. I call it a sister because I feel like it's a more pretty keyboard between the two QK siblings. Yes, the size is smaller, but that's not why it's prettier. They place greater emphasis on brighter color options and combinations to really bring out a more playful and fun keyboard. And as they say, form follows function. This one got all the function covered as well. And guess what? It starts at $138. Let's get started. Alright, so the QK60 also comes in a smaller carrying case as the QK65. It makes sense since the smaller size and the wireless capabilities of the QK60 makes this keyboard very portable. Let's quickly go over what's inside, shall we? So you got things like the owl stabs, which are great by the way. Then you got some gasket socks. Remember the gasket socks? The socks work better to promote greater flex than pour-on foam or the gasket jackets. Then you got some interesting stuff like the silicone plate fillers. For WKL or the HHKV versions, I'll show you what these actually do later. Then you got some hardware and some JST cables and also the receiver for 2.4GHz if you decide to use 2.4. You also got this nice bonus Allen driver with the QWERTY keys logo. Finally, they even provide you a nicely coiled cable as well. Then you got the PCB. What I have here is the wireless version with hot swap. This will also come in wired and soldered versions also, if that is your vibe. For the first time since the Voice 65, QWERTY Keys Now Labs decided to put per-key RGB into this bright red PCB for the QK60. You can see where they decided to make the smaller QK60 a more fun type of keyboard. The sockets are in south-facing orientation and have plenty of flex cuts to work together with the plates and also increase the overall flex as well. Flip the PCB over and you see the, you know, the familiar standard KO hot swap sockets right here. Since the version I have is wireless, instead of turning the board on and off using like a key dance, QWERTY keys decided to go more old school and use a slide switch here instead right on the PCB. Now, since one of the major focus for this board is color, QK60 can be had with a matching anodized aluminum plate to match the case itself. The plate is a very nice finish, the same as my lavender case. The aluminum plate has numerous strategic flex cuts to work together with the PCB and provide a more comfortable typing experience. We'll put this to the test later. Plus, you still have the option of going with the FR4, the polycarbonate, or palm if that's what you want to use. As with most boards these days, you get the various different foams like under PCB case foam, the plate foam, as well as the famous Owl Labs PE foam to customize the sound of your QK60 here as well. Let's move on to the fun part, the case. The version I have here is the lavender aluminum with a clear acrylic top. The concept behind the QK60 was a combination of different color contrasts with materials and textures to create a more fun board. The board can be had with so many different lowercase colors as you can see right here from a more classic white to a more bright mint color. You have lots of options for the top case as well. You can either choose between the two acrylic options in the smoky or clear or the aluminum tops in black or white, which makes it a little bit more classic. Then you can even choose the bottom stainless steel weight finish. What I have here is the Ice White Eco, but you can also grab the PVD black, the gold, or even the chroma. You can also choose from three different layouts. The one I have is winkyless, so it has plate fillers where the wind key would normally go. You can also get this in HHKB, happy hacking keyboard as well as the standard with all the keys accessible including the win key. You see where I'm going with this? You can mix and match so many different colors 
materials, layouts to really create your own style. And that's what QWERTYKEY was going for with the QK60. The design of the case is somewhat reminiscent of the QK65, but at the same time, not really same. There is definitely more play on colors and textures blending together here, where you see the upper acrylic case kind of coming together with the lower aluminum right here. Overall, really nice combination of material play for the QK60. And I don't think I have to really go into the finish quality for this too much because Owl Labs and Cordy Keys does a fantastic job in this area anyways. If you look into the case, there are some features that I want to point out. So this version I have is wireless, which means that it has a battery pack. But instead of just like having a random battery pack stuck to the bottom, Cordy Keys actually embedded it in, then created this nice little cover to make it look very clean. It's even sitting in its own little silicone dampener inside. Plus, the case was designed to be screwless in appearance from the outside. So instead of like having exposed screws on the bottom, or like hiding them behind the foot like the QK65, Cordy Keys decided to place the screw points on the inside perimeter of the upper case, so that once built, the keycaps actually hide the hardware. It's a nice trick used by some other manufacturers as well, typically higher end, and it's executed well here as well. Finally, you can see where the Cordy Keys has actually improved QK60 from the QK65. The younger sister uses a daughter board versus the USB port being part of the main PCB. This will help increase the flex and create a more even typing feel and sound as well. Now, before we hop into the build of this thing, a quick word from our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is an online service that helps you print PCBs, do 3D printing, or even CNC machining. If you're an aspiring keyboard designer or whatever else designer, you can take your design and simply upload it to get something made quick. Or if you have the source code for a PCB that you already have and you need a replacement, you can also get that done as well. They can handle all types of PCBs from your simple single layer designs to multi-layer stacks. Beyond PCBs, if you want to try making your own case, PCBWay can machine that as well. Now, a very exciting new service that PCBWay offers, OEM. Instead of just making a single component, you can actually test PCBWay to be an OEM manufacturer and make the whole thing. They can do anything from PCBs to CNC cases to even assembly. And using global manufacturing, they can offer very competitive prices. Is there a keyboard keyboard on the horizon? Well, check out OEM at PCBWay. So let's build this thing and see if it can stand up to the high bar set by the QK65 already, shall we? So for my build, I'm going to follow Cordy Key suggestions and use all the foams provided. So I start by using the under PCB case foam like this. For the PCB and the plate, I'm also using the provided PE foam as well as the plate foam here as well. I'm also using the provided owl stabs looped with Crytox 205. For hot swap builds, it is recommended that you also use the provided standoffs for a more secure build as well. You don't want things to fall apart when you take the switches out. Now, speaking of switches, I decided to go with a set of Texi Strawberry Ice Linear switches. These are made with the UPE upper housing and nylon lower housing, so they have a pretty nice and deep sound. And the UPE stem helps to create a nice and smooth operation as well. UPE is kind of like UHMWP. Switches have become so good these days that I'm actually using these straight stock out of the bag with no lubing. Plus, I think the soft pink against the faint lavender plate actually looks really nice, don't you think? So this is where I'm always impressed by Cordy Keys or Owl Labs. It's the small details. Like for example, they make sure to go and provide countersunk screw holes for the plates. I literally see 400 and up keyboard kits that omit details like this. And to see this kind of stuff on a $138 board makes me happy and helps me appreciate this even more. Like the likes of QK65 and Mr. Sue, you take the gasket socks like this and just slip it on to the end of the plate tab like this. So you're not messing around with foam and you're not sticking it onto the case or the plate or whatever it is. Now, remember what I said about those plate fillers for wind keyless and HHKB? This is where they go for this WKL model. What happens is that these will fit where a switch would normally go, and then the RGB from the socket below, it illuminates the design from the bottom. So you can choose from various different designs and colors. It's a nice little detail here as well. Now for keycaps, I thought, what would go together with this lavender? I decided to go with the Osumi Mochi set with the Taro add-ons. I think the purple from the tarot kit really helps to match the keycaps to the lavender colorway and create this awesome look and feel for this QK60. Okay, now, those little plate fillers, what do they look like? 
Yeah, boy, there's nothing too crazy, but these are pretty subtle little features that really add to the character of the QK60. So enough talk. One of the QK65 strong suits was the Typhoon comfort and sound. How does this fare against that? From a flex perspective, it's actually better than the QK65. This aluminum plate version flexes just as much as the QK65 with the palm plate. The daughter board really helps out here uh, for the QK60. Even with the aluminum plate, uh, very nice and isolated kind of flex, right? It's not really a bounce, but it's definitely a, an isolated flex. What about the sound? Let's check it out. So this is where the QK60 differs slightly from the QK65. The QK65 was a very Owlabbish style marbly sound and actually pretty loud, right? The QK60, even with the PE foam, doesn't emphasize the marbly sound as much. Instead, it has a very warm and woody kind of sound. I believe it's actually due to the mixture of the different materials as well as the size difference between the 60 and the 65. The acrylic top is actually helping to taper off the usual, more clinical sound of aluminum cases. And typically, larger cases do have bigger sound as well. This is purely preferential, but the QK60 doesn't sound exactly like the QK65. It has its own characteristic sound, and from overall quality perspective, like sound quality, I would actually say it's on par with its larger brother. It's like this, right? You can have two singers, they both have a great voice, but they have different singing tones and pitches. That's how I see the two QK twins. Okay, finally, let's talk about the software. So this being a fully customizable mechanical keyboard, it should have some kind of software, right? Right. But it's not the typical VIA or QMK. In order for Corda Keys to create a wireless capable PCB with customization, they had to develop their own QMK based software called QK Configurator. Honestly, it looks and functions just like VIA in that it's real time changing. It also allows you to change the key maps, the layers, the macros, and even the lighting options for the PCB. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, and it's very much on par with VIA. So, what is my final thought? I think Keys has another banger of a keyboard with the QK60. Honestly, I have not yet been disappointed by any of the offerings from either Owl Labs or their more accessible brand, right? Keys. They borrow a lot of the learnings from the more premium Owl Lab boards, and then they kind of inject it into the more affordable package for a lot of the QWERTY keys boards. And the QK60 starts at just 138 for you know the wired version and 143 for the wireless version. Even when you factor in the $35 shipping to the US, you are still getting a lot of for your money right here. Great looks with loads of customization options, great typing feel, and also sound. Plus, you're getting features on this QK60 that is not even offered on some of the higher-end Owl Lab offerings, like wireless. If I had to nitpick here, I would have liked to see a small design or maybe a logo like to kind of break the monotony of this big, chunky white space right here, but I know, you can't even see it when the keyboard is being used, but that's just me. Details and details, people. But if you're in the market for a fantastic 60%, you should definitely set an alarm for this QK60 so you don't miss the pre-order. I'll provide the pre-order information in the description below, so if you're interested, go check it out right there. Finally, some of you may be aware, maybe some not, but I do have a Discord community where you can ask questions, share your love for mechanical keyboards, and whatnot. We try to keep it helpful as possible and non-toxic, so check out the invite link in the description below, and hey, join us in the community. As usual, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll have more content for you in the future. Thanks.